Hello, my name, my name is Pavel, and today I want to tell you about coroutines and uh, more specifically about uh, generators part. Um, this is the part two of the two talks. Uh, the two talks are only loosely uh, connected, so you can watch any of them. Uh, you don't have to watch the other one. Uh, of course, I think that you will benefit from watching both, both of them, uh, but uh, only if you want to. So uh, this time I want to tell you about uh, how to wrap your head around uh, generators part of the coroutines, uh, how to develop intuition of how they work. Uh, we'll start with a simple generator and uh, we'll uh, lay our path towards uh, range generators, including we'll uh, see uh, how recursive generators uh, work in principle and I hope we'll have uh, uh, a little bit of time to touch uh, synchronous generators. And uh, disclaimer, the code on the slides uh, should not be used uh, in production because it is somewhat suboptimal and you uh, want to use uh, a little bit more complex uh, but more uh, optimal code, not the one from the slides. And um, Let's uh, re uh, remember what, what is a coroutine. A coroutine is a function that uh, which body includes uh, one of the keywords core return, core weight, and core yield. Uh, today, this time, we'll uh, concentrate on the core yield uh, keyword in this talk. Uh, here's a little taxonomy of the coroutines. Uh, we have a routine, uh, an ancestor or a program. It branches off to subroutine and coroutine. And in C++ 20, we got stackless coroutines as compared uh, to stackful coroutines, which are also sometimes called fibers. Um, you may know that C++ borrowed many things from Simula and uh, as, uh, among, among other things, it borrowed coroutines as well, though uh, it, it was uh, around 60 years uh, to, uh, for coroutines to finally uh, arrive in C++. I was told that uh, coroutines in some form were in Simula 1, that is uh, several years more. So it's uh, 60 plus years uh, ago that we had coroutines already, at least in some, in some form. And uh, when you write a uh, coroutine in your source code, code uh, compiler does a transformation of uh, the code you've written, you written. And the standards uh, says that uh, the body of the coroutine uh, is uh, transformed uh, like this, as if uh, the body is replaced by this pseudocode. And uh, as uh, like, uh, from a bird's view, uh, we have uh, initial suspend point and a final suspend point, and of course, a body of the coroutine. And uh, at initial suspend point, when we call our coroutine, we can uh, suspend the coroutine or uh, continue the execution. And at final suspend point, we can finish the uh, execution and free all the resources. And uh, otherwise, uh, we can also suspend the coroutine. So uh, part of that magic we'll try to uh, uncover and uh, gain intuition about uh, in this talk. And here is the first uh, part of uh, that magic. Uh, when you write co-yield expression, the compiler transforms it into this construction, uh, uh, namely uh, co-weight expression of uh, yield value called uh, on the promise object. And uh, here's another uh, piece of magic that compiler does uh, core return uh, with an optional expression is transformed into this construction that you can see below this uh, on the slide on the slide. Uh, uh, in our case, we allow only uh, to return void to core return void. We don't allow to allow to core return uh, values uh, in our generators. So, this, uh, in this case, uh, the expression, the statement, uh, current statement transforms into uh, calling this optional expression of type void uh, necessarily. Then we call return void on the promise type and then we go to final suspend label. 
And um, here's uh, how uh, you can uh, directly use it, so to speak. Uh, when you write coroutine, uh, for example, at the end of your uh, coroutine, generate a coroutine, uh, this happens, this transformation happens, or uh, if you don't write coroutine, uh, this uh, transformation happens anyway, because implicitly uh, you have a coroutine at the end of uh, the body of your coroutine. So um, best practices so far, uh, let's uh, quickly recap them. We uh, want to have lazy asynchronous tasks because uh, it uh, provides us some safety guarantees uh, as opposed to eager tasks, so-called. Uh, so laziness uh, makes the task uh, st uh, start execution when we await on the task and we can uh, either co-wait on the uh, result of this uh, lazy task or we can synchronously uh, wait uh, for the result of the asynchronous task, um, uh, possibly blocking our thread. So I uh, recommend to watch Lewis and Baker's uh, talk, Structured Concurrency, uh, where he partly discusses why uh, we have, uh, this is the best way that we can do it. So uh, now let's get to the, uh, topic of our talk. Uh, we'll start with naive generator, so, uh, so-called. And uh, here's the uh, one of the possibly simplest uh, generator that you can write. We, uh, inside our uh, generator coroutine function, we co-yield uh, value hello, which is a uh, uh, character literal. And uh, the other uh, co-yield is uh, yielding uh, a constant. Um, so you can use it uh, like this. We uh, just uh, sketching the interface that we want to use. We call the coroutine function, get the generator object, and then we can uh, call uh, this uh, generator object to uh, extract values, yielded values from that generator. And so let's see how it works uh, uh, on the uh, bird's eye view. Uh, we um, execute this statement. We uh, call the coroutine function. Uh, a coroutine frame uh, is uh, uh, created for us. The coroutine frame contains some internal state stuff and uh, the promise uh, object, uh, type of which we have to define ourselves. Uh, and the promise object uh, tells when and how to suspend and resume uh, the coroutine. Uh, and also contains some uh, state stuff that we need to uh, make this all work. So um, next, we start to execute the body of our coroutine function. We get to co-yield. Oh, yeah. Uh, first of all, we get to initial suspend point, where we suspend because uh, this is uh, the way we want it to work. Uh, I'll explain it a bit later. Uh, next, uh, we uh, finish the ex execution of the first line, the first sta statement. We get the um, we, we have the constructed uh, generator object, uh, which is uh, associated with the coroutine that is suspended at initial suspend point. Okay, now we want to extract some values from uh, that generator. We uh, do it uh, using um, function call operator, which resumes the coroutine, uh, then executes a co-yield expression uh, in this statement, which tells us that we uh, want to suspend the coroutine immediately after yielding a value. Uh, and uh, after that, we uh, get the control back. And uh, also the value that was yielded, uh, we get as well. Next, uh, we want to get the next value. And uh, this is very similar. The coroutine resumes. Uh, we execute statements. We yield a uh, value. Uh, we suspend the coroutine. And uh, we get uh, our value back and uh, put it in the console. Um, I want to draw your attention that uh, the coroutine frame that was created for us leaves until uh, f generator object uh, that is associated with it until that object is destroyed. 
So uh, basically, a lifetime of the coroutine and uh, all the resources associated with it is tied to uh, that uh, generator object that we get by calling a uh, generator coroutine. And uh, finally, of course, we get output like this, just hello world. Um, why do we want initial suspend? Uh, we want it because uh, it uh, provides us with a, with the least uh, overhead. For example, we can have uh, a coroutine generate like this. Uh, with the first statement in the body, we are trying to get some values that we want to then yield. And uh, this uh, statement can throw. If we uh, don't uh, suspend the coroutine, uh, Initially, at the initial suspend point, we risk uh, to have an exception. So firstly, we uh, must uh, do some work. Then uh, while doing that work, we risk to have an exception. We don't know or want to deal with that exception before extracting values. So, uh, and even uh, we can have just uh, created that object and uh, then do nothing with it and just uh, leave it as is uh, without extracting values and just destroy it. And in this case, we also don't want uh, the overhead of um, some unnecessary work. So we just uh, suspend uh, the generator coroutine at initial suspend point. And uh, this, in my opinion, um, follows the zero overhead uh, principle. And uh, as Uncle Ben once said to Peter Parker, what you don't use, you don't have to pay for. And yeah. So um, another uh, aspect of uh, resource management is, is that uh, when we create our uh, generate uh, object, uh, we don't have to um, extract all the values from that uh, generator. For example, here we uh, have our object, we created our object, we extract only one, one value. Uh, after that, uh, our uh, um, generator coroutine is suspended after the first co-yield. And at this point, or at, uh, actually at any point when uh, the coroutine is suspended, is in the suspended state, it is safe to destroy uh, that uh, coroutine through destroying the uh, generator object associated with it. Uh, and so in this case, uh, this happens uh, after extracting only one value. And it is safely with, uh, an, with a star because uh, it works um, as long as you manage all the resources uh, within the coroutine in the RAI style. So if you, uh, for example, open a connection to, to a database, and uh, don't close it uh, in uh, array style. Uh, it may happen that you uh, destroy your coroutine before closing the connection manually, manually and uh, this will leak uh, the connection uh, because it can, a connection, for example, is uh, just another resource. So uh, this is destruction uh, of a coroutine is safe uh, if the coroutine is uh, in suspended state and all the resources are managed and managed and uh, in uh, array style. Um, so let's uh, finally define or try to define our uh, generator type. Uh, so this is how it looks. It sh uh, probably should be no discard because it doesn't make sense to uh, call a coroutine and uh, just ignore the return value because, uh, well, why are you calling the coroutine in the first place? So I think that uh, no discard uh, should be uh, should be decorating this type. Uh, although I didn't uh, do it, that was uh, an afterthought, as as you do. And so here we have uh, just usual stuff: uh, move constructor, move assignment operator, and destructor. Uh, this is kind of the rule of three. Uh, we have a function call operator with which we extract values from uh, our coroutine, generator coroutine. And in, in, in the private section, we have uh, 
constructor for our convenience uh, with which we uh, create an instance of the generator connected with the coroutine through promise. And we have a coroutine handle. And notice that uh, this generator only holds a coroutine handle, which is a lightweight type, uh, basically just a pointer. Uh, so this uh, the generator object instance is uh, relatively, relatively lightweight. Um, and of course, we have promise type that we uh, need to define to uh, enable the compiler backend to uh, interoperate with our type uh, and uh, to understand what we want uh, our coroutine to do. And uh, let's define uh, this promise type. Uh, here's the promise type. We have uh, here the six um, mandatory function, member functions uh, that we need to define in order to satisfy the requirements uh, from uh, compiler backend. And we have uh, get value uh, member function for our convenience, which uh, basically returns uh, a reference to the currently yielded value. And uh, in the private section, we have uh, a variant that holds the result. It's either monostate, uh, indicating that uh, neither value uh, have been yield uh, and uh, no uh, a value have been yield, uh, no an exception, uh, yes, neither no. Uh, no an exception uh, uh, was thrown. Um, and yes, this is the promise type uh, uh, of the promise object uh, that uh, lives inside coroutine frame. Um, let's uh, go uh, over every uh, member function that we have uh, in the promise type. The first one is get return object. Uh, we use, uh, or rather the compiler uses this uh, call to obtain uh, an object that uh, will be eventually returned from a uh, coroutine call. And here we have a coroutine foo, for example, uh, which returns a generator that generates strings. And uh, by calling uh, this um, coroutine, we get back uh, an, an instance of uh, generator type. So, uh, behind the scenes, uh, get return object is called, and uh, the object that we return from that call ends up in the variable f. The next two are initial suspend and final suspend, uh, which tells uh, which tell that uh, we want to suspend always uh, at both uh, initial suspend point and final suspend point. Uh, I already explained why we want to suspend that initial spend point because we don't want the overhead of uh, executing uh, possibly unnecessary uh, work within the coroutine uh, body. And we want final spend because we want to preserve uh, the state that is associated with the coroutine, for example, uh, yielded value, or if we have an exception, we want to be able to rethrow that exception uh, when the coroutine is finished. The next one is uh, yield value. Um, you can uh, see the no accept specification. You can just ignore the no accept specification and const uh, specifications, but I included it to uh, to become uh, so the code can be somewhat complete but you can just ignore it. So uh, here we uh, get a value that is to be yielded. We store that value uh, in the result field of our promise type and just return uh, an instance of uh, suspend always. And uh, this happens when we have a co-yield. Uh, let's remember that uh, co-yield expression uh, is uh, trans uh, transformed into uh, co-weight expression on the result of yield value call on the promise object. And uh, in our case, uh, the result is uh, an instance of suspend always, which tells that uh, the coroutine should be always uh, suspended. Um, the next one is return void. This is just a dummy um, member function that does nothing because 
uh, we don't need to do anything when our coroutine is uh, finished, uh, but we need to provide that uh, implementation uh, in order to uh, satisfy requirements of the backend. So the backend calls or virtually calls uh, this function anyway. Uh, it, it may optimize it out, but uh, we need to tell uh, explicitly that, yes, we uh, are aware that uh, you are expecting uh, this uh, member function and uh, we provide it, uh, although it does nothing in our case. So it, it is used when you uh, write a Curtin statement, like in this uh, case. Let's remember that Curtin statement is uh, transformed into this uh, construction, um, where basically we uh, call, or the, rather the backend calls return void on the promise object, and then we go to final spent uh, label. Um, as I said, you can uh, write Curtin explicitly, but uh, you don't have to because uh, uh, return void uh, will be called uh, implicitly anyway, even uh, if you don't write a return statement. The next one is uh, unhandled exception. It is called uh, in the catch clause uh, of the transform coroutine body uh, and it catches exception or is supposed to handle code exception uh, if we had an, an exception. And uh, in our case, we just uh, Store the uh, current exception pointer in our result field. Um, and uh, that's it uh, regarding the mand mandatory functions. And uh, what we have left is a uh, get value function that is defined for our convenience, uh, with which we um, are trying to get uh, uh, the value, the yielded value out of the promise type. And uh, in the implementation, we check if uh, the result actually uh, holds an exception pointer, in which case, uh, if, if it does, we rethrow the exception. And otherwise, we uh, just uh, extract uh, a value of type T from the result field and uh, return a reference to uh, the value stored in the result. So, uh, of course, precondition. We have to uh, keep in mind that the precondition of this function is that we uh, must have either a result or a value, yielded value, or we have to have an exception. Otherwise, uh, we'll try to get a value uh, from the result holding a monostate, and that's not good. So uh, this is uh, how uh, promise type look looks like. Um, and uh, again, I am reminding you that uh, this is the type of the promise object that uh, lives inside coroutine frame and is used uh, to communicate with the compiler backend. And um, let's get back to uh, generator. We defined our promise type. We have to define uh, the rest of the members of our generator. This is relatively straightforward. Uh, here's a move constructor, which just basically moves uh, coroutine handle from other instance. We have to do this explicitly because uh, coroutine handle, um, the semantics of coroutine handle is just like uh, on the ordinary value, ordinary, for example, a pointer. Uh, when we move a uh, pointer, uh, the other uh, instance uh, doesn't become null, uh, null there. Uh, that's why we have to explicitly uh, move uh, the value from uh, the other coroutine handle and uh, set it to null putter. Uh, move assignment operator is very similar. Uh, we add that, uh, we add the check that if uh, the current coroutine uh, is uh, uh, alive. Uh, we want to destroy it before uh, reassigning uh, coroutine handle from other instance. Um, and uh, in destructor, we just check if the coroutine is coroutine handle 
is uh, connected or associated with the coroutine. And if it uh, is associated, we destroy the coroutine. Uh, so basically in the destructor and uh, possibly in the uh, move assignment, we check uh, if uh, we currently uh, have uh, coroutine associated, associated with uh, the current instance and uh, destroy the coroutine uh, in order to uh, clean up resources or uh, get another uh, coroutine from other instance. Um, here we have operator function call uh, uh, with help uh, uh, with uh, which we uh, extract values from coroutine, uh, from our coroutine gener generator. Um, the first uh, statement in the body uh, resumes the coroutine, so you can use uh, resume member function explicitly, or you can, ju uh, can just uh, call uh, as if it's a function, uh, call the coroutine handle. Uh, this resumes the coroutine uh, that uh, eventually gives uh, the control back, at, at which point we want to uh, get value that uh, uh, just has been um, yielded. So uh, we call get value our convenience fun function on the promise object that we get from uh, coroutine handle by calling promise. Uh, and uh, uh, reminding you that uh, when we get when we call get value, we uh, check if uh, the result holds an exception. In which case, we throw that exception, or otherwise, we get. Uh, um, reference to the result value and we just return that uh, reference outward and so what we have left is uh, our convenience constructor that is used in uh, get return object uh, within the promise and uh, that's it uh, this is our generator naive uh, uh, generator uh, this is its uh, declaration and uh, we can use uh, again, uh, uh, our generator like this. This is the same example. Let's go over it uh, now with the more details. Um, so when we call uh, our coroutine function generator, our generator coroutine function, we uh, have a coroutine frame created for us, which contains promise and other internal stuff. Uh, we uh, also uh, call, we, we have a get return object called and uh, uh, an instance of uh, generator type uh, uh, waiting to uh, get returned and end up in a variable f in this case. Also, uh, when uh, the execution starts, uh, initial suspend is called, which tells that we want to suspend the coroutine uh, at the initial suspend point. And at that point, uh, the uh, control returns to uh, uh, outside code, and we can proceed uh, executing the next statement. When we call uh, our generator to extract a, a value, uh, operative function call is called, uh, coroutine is resumed, uh, the control transfers uh, is transferred to the coroutine, coroutine resumes, co yield expression is executed. Uh, it yields an expression uh, by calling yield value, which stores uh, a value, a provided value uh, in the call yield expression uh, as an argument to the call. Uh, we uh, save that value in the result field within the promise. Also, we return suspend always uh, and uh, as a result of, of the call to yield value and the coroutine suspends. At uh, this uh, point, the control returns uh, outside uh, from uh, to the point where we uh, resumed our coroutine. Now we can execute the next statement. Uh, and uh, here we return uh, the freshly yielded value with our um, convenience uh, get value function which again checks uh, if we have exception. Uh, in, in our case, we don't have an exception. And we just um, 
return um, a reference to the uh, stored uh, yielded value. So um, this repeats basically uh, going over the same or similar steps. Uh, we resume the coroutine, we execute uh, the rest sta statements, we uh, finally execute the co-yield expression. Uh, co-yield expression saves uh, the yielded value and suspend the coroutine. The coroutine uh, gives the control back to the function call operator of the generator. And uh, from that, uh, we uh, return a reference to the yielded value. So uh, here we end up with our coroutine suspended at, uh, at the point after the uh, last yield, last co yield. And um, yeah, this is basically how it works uh, in our simplest uh, naive generate implementation. So this implementation has uh, at least two drawbacks. One of the drawbacks is that uh, we uh, uh, have no idea how many uh, values can we extract from the uh, uh, from our generator. So um, I thought this is perfect for infinite sequences. Uh, so for example, here's our friend Fibonacci and uh, Fibonacci sequence is infinite. We don't have to check if uh, the generator has uh, more values to uh, extract it, uh, from it. And uh, this interface basically works perfectly uh, for infinite sequences and for Fibonacci sequence in particular. And the other drawback is that, um, oh yeah, uh, so we in this case, we know that our uh, example generator has only two values uh, to yield. So uh, we uh, yield uh, both values, get hello world. And uh, we, uh, oh, I'm not sure what should happen uh, if we uh, yield, if we try to uh, extract another value. Uh, basically, this is uh, undefined behavior, uh, and we uh, have to do something with it. Basically, we have to provide some way to know if uh, the generator has more values to be extracted. And uh, the other um, drawback is that uh, we uh, make unnecessary copies. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, we make a copy of uh, basically a temporary object that is created from a string literal. Um, and uh, in fact, we don't have to do that. So in this case, when we have a constant, we have no choice but uh, make a copy of that constant. Uh, so uh, the, in this case, our solution works fine. And let's see uh, how, uh, or rather, uh, let's see that uh, the uh, reference to that constant uh, actually persists uh, over uh, suspensions and release. So we suspend our coroutine after the call wait, uh, giving the reference to the constant uh, to yield value call. Uh, and then, uh, then uh, while our coroutine is suspended, the standard says that um, the reference to uh, the object within the co-yield expression uh, must uh, survive uh, suspension and uh, resumption of the coroutine. So basically what it says is that when we have uh, an object uh, in the co-yield expression, we can suspend the coroutine and uh, that reference to that object will still be available and uh, will be valid uh, until we resume the coroutine or the coroutine is destroyed. So in this case, when we have uh, string literal, uh, what happens is uh, we um, have a temporary object that is constructed from the string li literal. Uh, a reference uh, to that temporary object is uh, uh, passed to yield value um, call. Then the coroutine is suspended. Then uh, at some point, the coroutine resumes, and only after the coroutine resumes, uh, that temporary object is destroyed as part of the uh, call wait of the as part of the statement 
uh, in which uh, basically core yield expression is executed. So um, you can think about this as um, basically uh, ordinary code in which uh, temporary object is created and uh, destroyed at the end of the uh, express uh, or, uh, at the end of the statement. But uh, in the coroutine context, uh, the end of the statements uh, happens after the resumptions uh, after the resumption of the coroutine. Uh, in this particular case of uh, co-weight expression. I hope this makes sense. So uh, let me uh, go through it again. Uh, ordinarily, uh, temporary objects are destroyed at the end of the statement. And uh, in this case, in, um, within the coroutine context, uh, basically the end of the statement happens after the resumption of the, uh, in this case, co-yield expression and co-weight expression which it, uh, it is transformed to. So um, all of this uh, results in uh, basically that uh, reference in the yield value uh, call persists and uh, stays valid uh, during suspensions of, of the coroutine and until uh, the coroutine is destructed. We can use uh, this uh, fact uh, to um, alleviate uh, unnecessary copies. So at this point, uh, actually, you know almost everything that you need to know about uh, how new generators work. And the rest of the talk is just uh, design and uh, design decisions. So uh, let's move on. Here is a simple generator in which I try to mitigate uh, the drawbacks uh, that I discussed earlier, uh, namely uh, the fact that uh, we couldn't uh, know if there are values uh, in uh, generator left, left to be extracted. And in this case, I tried to use, I tried to add a has value member function, which is supposed to tell us um, if uh, the generator has uh, any more values. Um, here is the uh, gist of the changes that we uh, have to make to make it work. I will not go uh, through the implementation of this particular uh, example. Um, just uh, notice that we have a mutable flag, mutable bool flag at the uh, bottom of the slide. And this is already uh, indicating that this, uh, the, something is uh, not right with this. So um, I tried to preserve uh, the interface that we had. Uh, so basically, we uh, could uh, get the value with the uh, uh, function call and uh, without calling has value if we just know that uh, the generator has values. And uh, otherwise, we have uh, uh, has value call first, and then we uh, want to extract value with function call, and um, which makes both of these uh, function call and has value member function uh, uh, forcing to uh, to resume the coroutine, so we can somehow know that uh, there is a value actually uh, that uh, the generator can yield. And uh, for that reason, we need uh, that uh, ASCII um, mutable bool. And uh, actually, this is what we uh, basically end up with. And I think it's ugly. You can find um, the implementation in the bonus slides. I will not go over that. And here is another approach uh, without uh, extra members, uh, extra fields. Uh, and we have uh, two different members, advance, which advances uh, the coroutine uh, in the sequence of yielded values and uh, get value. And uh, uh, for this uh, um, approach, we need to modify promise type and we need to implement advanced and get value member functions. Let's do that. And so um, this is how we uh, have to use it. We have to always call advance first. And if advance returns true, we uh, can 
or we, we are able to call get value to extract yielded value. Um, so let's start with promise type. Uh, this is uh, the this is the things that uh, has uh, has to be changed. Uh, so uh, I basically uh, here I basically uh, just slightly rearrange the code. Uh, extracted has exception um, uh, check into a member function, and we want also to do something with extra copies while calling uh, yield value. And uh, let's uh, start with that. So when we uh, receive uh, const reference in yield value, uh, we have no choice but to copy uh, the value into our uh, field result. So we can uh, later return uh, the result by non-const reference so uh, that you can move from uh, the returned uh, uh, value, uh, reference to the value. Uh, but um, we can uh, add an overload which receives an error value reference. In this case, uh, we also have uh, have to uh, add a variant to our result field, which is uh, just uh, a pointer to a non-const object. And uh, instead of copying, we're just uh, storing the uh, address of uh, that uh, error value uh, of the object uh, that is uh, referred to by the error value reference. And even if it is uh, a temporary object, uh, as I showed, uh, the uh, object itself and reference to it and pointer to it uh, thereof um, will be valid and we can uh, store it and use it uh, while the coroutine is suspended. So we are doing just that. Uh, the next is uh, the slight rearrangement, slight re uh, refactoring. We just extract uh, the checks, uh, the check uh, for exception in our result into uh, has exception uh, member function, and we just replace uh, the check uh, with the uh, uh, call to member function, and also at the bottom. Um, at the bottom, you can see that uh, instead of uh, just uh, getting a reference to the result, we now have to um, basically dispatch between uh, the value itself and uh, address of the value. And uh, in both cases, in case of the value and in case of the address of the value, we just extract that and uh, can, uh, the reference it if we need to and return a reference to stored value. Again, precondition uh, of this uh, convenience function is that we have to have result exception in any form, either value itself or address or an exception pointer. Otherwise, bad stuff happens. And um, here, for, for example, uh, we want to populate uh, our collection named values with the uh, values extracted from, from uh, our generator. And uh, we don't have to, we don't want to, and we don't have to copy values into our collection. And we can just move uh, values uh, that are stored uh, in the generator. And so in this case, uh, get value returns uh, non-const references, uh, which allows us to move uh, values. But what if we don't want to uh, return values by non-const references, and we only want to return values by uh, co only const references? In this case, we uh, don't have to deal with the uh, overhead uh, that uh, covers um, all the shenanigans uh, copying and uh, guaranteeing us that we uh, return non-const uh, reference to the value and we just can uh, have one uh, yield value uh, overload, just one fun uh, member function that receives uh, values by const reference, just saves address of uh, that uh, const variable and uh, we can 
hold that um, address in our result instead of just having a value and address we have uh, just const address const pointer to the value and um, in uh, the receiving side of things in get value we just uh, uh, get that uh, pointer from our result field dereference it and return const uh, reference to the value Notice that uh, we um, here uh, have only one basically variant uh, for value, not just uh, not not uh, a, uh, a value and uh, a pointer. We just uh, have to store one pointer, and this saves uh, somewhat saves some overhead. And um, since we defined uh, get value in our generator as returning auto ref, we don't have to change that. Uh, the const constness of reference will propagate automatically. So this is the two or rather four things that we had to change. We uh, added one overload uh, for yield value that uh, receives uh, error value reference and stores uh, an address instead of a value. Um, we um, somewhat rearranged uh, has exception and get value, extracted check to has an exception in member function and added uh, the five thing, uh, the fifth uh, thing that we uh, changed is uh, we added a pointer to our variant result. So uh, we uh, have dealt with the promise type and uh, now we have to implement advance and get value in our generator type. And uh, this is really uh, relatively straightforward. We, um, in the advanced MEBA function, we uh, resume the coroutine. Um, sorry, we resume the coroutine and then return uh, true if the coroutine is not done or the coroutine has exception. So uh, the coroutine in this case has exception. When the coroutine has a, uh, an exception, it is uh, considered done, it is finished. But uh, in our case, we uh, suspend the coroutine at the final suspend point. Uh, and so uh, the coroutine is done, all the resources associated uh, with it uh, are alive. And uh, we are able to extract uh, exception uh, or uh, the status of the result uh, from uh, such a coroutine. So again, uh, we return true if the coroutine is not yet done or the coroutine is done and um, it has an exception. So the exception occurred. And uh, get value uh, member function is uh, even more uh, simple, it is even simpler. Um, we just uh, get the promise from the coroutine handle and call uh, get value uh, on the promise, which uh, returns for us. Uh, reference to the yielded value. And so uh, the precondition uh, for the get value in this case uh, is that we have to call advance every time and we are allowed to call get value only when advance uh, returns uh, true. So we have a question, can we return values of different types? This is a good question. Um, uh, generally, you can't return uh, values incompatible uh, with the type, basically uh, the type, type of the generator. So if you have, maybe I have an example. So here uh, in this example, we have uh, an int generator basically, and you are uh, allowed to yield only types compatible with ints. And from the generator, you uh, get precisely ints, nothing, nothing else. I hope I answered that question. And uh, yeah, let's see at this example. Um, we have a coroutine, uh, which uh, gets uh, values uh, in some way. Uh, and uh, then uh, 
we yield uh, those values one by one from the generator. Uh, here is the code uh, with which we are supposed to uh, extract values from our generator. And um, yeah, uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, while uh, after advancing, uh, it may it can mean that you have either value or uh, an exception and uh, a call to get value member function of the generator can uh, throw an exception if an exception uh, happened uh, within the uh, coroutine generator and so um, a consequence of uh, such design in this case is that when we uh, get an exception um, we uh, get true from uh, advance call, um, even though we have an, have an exception, then we can call get value, which throws an exception. And uh, after that, if we call get value again, we still uh, get an exception because we uh, did not advance, we still um, we are still in a state when uh, we have an exception and calling get value uh, will again uh, throw an exception. We have another question. Um, can we pass values to the generator? Yes, you can. Unfortunately, I, I forgot about that uh, opportunity because uh, at this point, this is obvious to me and uh, I'm sorry for that. Um, Yes, you can pass uh, parameters uh, to uh, generators. Um, um, it will magically work. So you uh, just uh, you can have a generator uh, that uh, receives a parameter. You can use that parameter within the coroutine generator. Uh, you do abs absolutely the same things that you would do without a parameter. So for example, if uh, in bar we pass, um, for example, some value and we want to yield uh, that value as, as uh, the first value, uh, you uh, just co-yield that uh, past value and uh, carry on as uh, usual uh, for the rest of the coroutine. And uh, the compiler will uh, handle uh, that uh, parameter that uh, can be passed uh, into the coroutine. We'll uh, put it in the coroutine frame if it needs to. We'll uh, gracefully handle um, all the uh, changes of states that can happen to that uh, variable and so on. Yes, excellent question. I completely forgot that you can do that and uh, do not cover in this uh, version of the presentation. But yes, you can do that. And so, um, yes, what uh, can we do to maybe make our life a little bit easier? We can uh, add another member function that uh, will tell us if we have an exception, actually. Uh, so we can determine uh, uh, the uh, situation when we have an exception rather than value. Uh, this is how it is implemented. Uh, so um, it's basically asking of the uh, promise type, promise object, uh, if it has an exception. And uh, eventually you can use it like this. So in a while uh, loop, you uh, call advance, check the result, and you can check if uh, the generator currently has an exception. Uh, you can handle an exception. In that case, otherwise you can uh, try to extract a value. And I think this is also ugly. And um, let's analyze, uh, let's try to analyze which requirements uh, we pose on the interface of our generator. Uh, first of all, we want to check if there are values that we can extract from the generator. Then we uh, should be able to get a value, get uh, the yielded value, extract that value from the generator. And uh, last thing uh, is uh, we uh, must be able to advance 
our coroutine to the next uh, yielded value. And um, I don't know if this is a surprise, but uh, iterators and ranges uh, satisfy these uh, requirements. Uh, uh, so this uh, design uh, work was uh, already done by Alexander Stepanov a uh, long time ago, and we uh, can just use uh, iterators uh, as a design uh, for our interface, so to speak. So uh, let's assume that now we have uh, iterators and begin and end uh, member functions in our generator, and we can uh, call uh, our generator uh, coroutine function. Uh, for in this case, we get a generator instance uh, in the variable f. We can call begin in, uh, on that variable. We get uh, an iterator. We can uh, dereference and advance uh, this iterator manually if we are uh, brave enough, or we can just use uh, range four uh, for it to do all the work for us, uh, namely to call begin, uh, get the iterator, advance the iterator, check uh, against end, uh, and uh, we uh, what. Uh, what is left for us is just uh, define a variable, uh, uh, loop variable, and uh, do with that uh, loop variable what we desire. In this case, we just uh, print uh, all the values from the generator into the console. And so um, let's take uh, what we had before our generator. We have to uh, make some changes. In this case, we have to change promise type a bit. We have to introduce uh, an iterator type within our generator. For example, you can introduce it separately uh, outside of this uh, generator type, but I decided to introduce it within the type to keep it all together, so to speak. And uh, also, instead of advance uh, and get value and uh, the like nonsense, we now have a begin call and end call which return uh, iterators. So let's, let's start with the promise type. We have uh, the three, five, seven mandatory functions uh, that are not changed from the previous uh, iterations. So the, uh, these are, uh, this stays the same. And uh, here I, again, uh, refactored a little bit uh, the uh, convenience member functions. Um, let's uh, go over them and see what uh, happens here. So is value initialized um, checks if we have some kind of result that is um, different from no result. That is, if our result does not hold monostate, means that uh, we either have a value or we have an, uh, have an exception. And we consider that the value is initialized at this point. Um, in get value, we uh, get rid of the checks and uh, th throwing uh, exceptions. We just uh, get uh, a reference to the value uh, from within uh, the promise. In this case, we check uh, if we have uh, an actual value or a pointer, uh, reference the pointer if we need to, and return a reference to the value. Um, in has uh, exception member function, we uh, still check if uh, we have an exception. Uh, in this case, exception pointer stored in our result, and uh, throw if exception checks. Um, if we actually have an exception and rethrows that exception. We have a question. Um, I'm sorry, this is a bit clunky on my, on my side. What happens if an exception is generated uh, while iterating using automatic for loop? Excellent question, we'll get to that. 
just a couple more slides. So um, the next uh, thing that we need to define is uh, iterator type. Uh, it has uh, some boilerplate, uh, some constructors, uh, equality and equality operators, uh, increment and the reference. And uh, in private section, we have, um, sorry, in private section, we have a pointer to coroutine handle uh, to uh, connect this iterator with uh, a, coroutine, a particular coroutine. Let's go over that. Um, here is the boring boilerplate. Uh, among other things, we have to define difference type, which uh, actually doesn't make sense for input iterators because uh, we uh, difference uh, or distance uh, between iterators that doesn't make sense for input iterator, but we have to define it other, uh, anyway. Um, we have a defaulted uh, default constructor. We have uh, explicit uh, iterator constructor that receives a coroutine handle with which we initialize our coroutine handle pointer. We have a uh, defaulted uh, equal equality operator and uh, non-equal operator. I uh, defined uh, non-equal operator explicitly just for illustration. Uh, and uh, since uh, C++20, uh, inequality operator can be syn synthesized uh, from the equality operator. Synthesized is a hard word for me. So next one is uh, increment operator. And uh, here with asserts, I uh, basically documented that we have a precondition that we are uh, allowed to uh, increment the iterator only if uh, e the coroutine handle uh, pointer is not null. So basically, this iterator is not equal to end and being a, a sentinel, so to speak, iterator, which uh, has a null pointer coroutine handle iterator, coroutine handle pointer, sorry. Uh, so, and uh, the coroutine should not uh, be done at this point. So we, uh, we are not allowed to increment an iterator that is uh, associated with the coroutine that is done, that is finished. Um, so the substantial body uh, starts with, uh, with the resuming coroutine uh, after the coroutine is resumed uh, and uh, Suspend it again, and the control gets back here. We check if the coroutine is done. If the coroutine is uh, indeed done, we um, basically move uh, the coroutine handle pointer to a temporary variable, coro handle in this case, and um, set the coro uh, coroutine handle pointer to null pointer, indicating that this uh, pointer becomes uh, end pointer, uh, this iterator becomes end iterator. And um, after that, we uh, ask the coroutine handle that we just saved uh, uh, to throw exception if uh, an exception uh, occurred. And uh, if an exception uh, is not thrown, this iterator still uh, is, uh, is, uh, is not associated with the coroutine. So uh, it's, it is basically equal to end iterator. And um, in case uh, uh, an exception is thrown, uh, it uh, actually doesn't matter, but still this, uh, iterator is uh, invalidated, it becomes end iterator. And um, yes, I forgot that I animated that. So we uh, move the coroutine handle pointer to a temporary variable, in this case, core handle, set it to null pointer, um, and uh, throw exception if we had one. And after that, we return the current in instance. Uh, it may be uh, still um, 
associated with the coroutine. Otherwise, it may become uh, equal to end, point, uh, end iterator. And uh, this, uh, this uh, implementation uh, gives us uh, this consequence. So basically, when we have uh, a generator, um, we can uh, get an iterator from begin call. Uh, in this case, uh, the uh, name of the variable is k. Our it, uh, iterator, we can make a copy of that iterator name i. We can use uh, one of them, in this case i, uh, to loop uh, and iterate over the values. And uh, when, uh, in this case, iterator i becomes equal to end, this means that uh, our coroutine is done, it is finished, and uh, the, uh, the iterator k that we saved uh, becomes invalid. Uh, this means that uh, the iterators that you uh, can get from begin are invalidated when uh, the coroutine is finished, uh, uh, the coroutine is done. Um, and if you happen to have uh, an iterator that uh, referred to that coroutine, it uh, basically becomes invalid to uh, refer to that coroutine through that iterator. Hope it makes sense. Uh, so the last piece here is uh, um, the reference operator. Here we, uh, here I um, again with asserts um, documented that we are allowed to dereference uh, an iterator if the coroutine uh, is uh, indeed associated with this iterator. The coroutine is not done, and um, we can uh, extract. Uh, value from the promise from the coroutine by calling get value on the promise object uh, of our coroutine handle. And we return uh, non uh, some kind of reference, uh, in our case, uh, non const reference uh, to the value from the reference operator. So we defined uh, promise types, changes in promise types. We defined uh, the whole new type iterator. Now we have to define. Um, begin and end. Notice that uh, begin uh, is uh, const but not uh, no accept. This means that begin basically doesn't change observable state. So uh, our generator is, uh, our generator has uh, reference semantics uh, regarding uh, its association with the coroutine. And uh, as uh, Phil Nash says that uh, our uh, generator instance is just a remote control of the coroutine. It uh, doesn't change its uh, state. So begin doesn't change its state. It still refers to the coroutine, but it can um, uh, resume the coroutine if uh, the coroutine can be resumed. So in the begin, we check if the coroutine is uh, not done, or rather if it is done, we return an end iterator. Otherwise, if the coroutine is not done, we uh, construct an uh, instance of the iterator. We um, check if the value is, is uh, initialized. Uh, if it is indeed initialized, we do nothing. If it is not initialized, uh, uh, saying that uh, we have no value, uh, uh, yielded value and uh, no exception stored in the promise state, we have to resume the coroutine by incrementing the iterator in order to have some uh, dereferenceable uh, iterator that refers to some yielded value. So basically, when we, uh, you call begin, you uh, have a chance to resume the coroutine with all the consequences. Um, this is needed because you can call begin uh, actually multiple times. For example, here uh, we just uh, check if uh, the uh, generator has values at all by comparing begin to end. Uh, we can uh, handle that situation. For example, return from the function or do something else. And um, later uh, we can uh, iterate over values in the generator, again, using range four which under the hood calls begin and end again. And uh, 
yeah, here we uh, allow to call uh, begin multiple times. And uh, if you call begin multiple times, but you do not uh, increment the iterator, it will resume the coroutine only once. Um, and yeah, after we handled uh, the uh, initialization of the value, uh, we return the uh, iterator instant that we end up with. And uh, the other uh, member function is end, in which we just uh, return an instance, a default constructed instance of the iterator, which is not associated with uh, any coroutine. Uh, this is basically the Sentinel uh, iterator um, that uh, is used to um, find out if uh, a particular iterator has uh, any values, or rather the routine associated with a particular iterator has uh, some values that we can uh, get from that iterator by dereferencing. So um, in this case, we had to uh, change our promise type. We had to introduce iterator type. We had to implement begin and end. And now we can, uh, for this uh, example generator, we can use it like this. We can uh, call our coroutine generator function, get the generator out of it. We can use uh, range four to iterate over the generated values. And uh, we'll, uh, we may uh, handle exceptions by enclosing it in trackage uh, block and yeah, so the consequence, oh, yes, uh, uh, we'll get to consequences a bit later. Let's see uh, how it works uh, from the bird's eye view. So when we start to iterate, um, the coroutine is resumed. We get to this uh, for uh, loop. We iterate over the values. We uh, yield values one by one. Uh, so after yielding, we get back. Uh, we uh, give control back to the outside code. Uh, in the outside code, we continue to iterate um, back and forth, back and forth, until we run uh, run out of values. In which case, we uh, exit uh, the for loop. We uh, execute. Uh, implicit uh, call return statement, in which case uh, return void is called. We go to final suspend. Final suspend tells us, uh, final suspend calls, uh, call uh, tells us that we have to suspend the coroutine at the final suspend point. And this time um, uh, the coroutine is suspended. Uh, the control gets back to the out outside for loop. Uh, the iterator that we just incremented uh, starts to be equal to end iterator and we exit the loop. Uh, in case we um, have an exception. So for example, in this example, we throw uh, it uh, from uh, uh, function get values, but uh, if we, for example, have um, a loop and we do something in that loop and uh, that something that we do in the loop uh, throws an exception the effect is the same um, in this case we uh, are trying to iterate uh, the values from the generator exception is thrown uh, it doesn't matter if it is thrown uh, just in the body or uh, in the loop within the generator uh, coroutine function uh, it uh, handles everything gracefully. It uh, uh, destroys all the uh, created objects according to uh, usual rules that you uh, can uh, expect. Uh, so basically in the reverse order of the construction. Uh, so it uh, clears the state, all the uh, data, all the variables. Uh, it calls unhandled exception um, in the catch clause uh, here, uh, in which case we uh, again get to final suspend. Final suspend tells us that 
uh, we have to suspend the coroutine at final suspend point. After that, uh, the control uh, returns to the outside uh, code. In our case, it's for loop. Uh, and um, at that point, uh, either begin or um, increment uh, operator that we uh, in, uh, implicitly call uh, within the range for loop, uh, rethrow the exception that we got within the coroutine. I hope uh, this answers the questions that uh, was uh, asked uh, before. So, and at this point, you know almost everything you need to know about the, uh, how generators work for real this time. Yes, uh, they tell me that uh, I answered the question. That's good. So let's see uh, the consequences of this design. Uh, in this case, either begin or increment uh, operator can throw. And uh, if they do not throw, uh, the reference uh, will never throw. And uh, basically, if uh, you, uh, so you uh, should expect troubles only from begin and uh, increment, never from the reference. And um, maybe you want to know, uh, maybe you don't want to get exception from uh, begin and increment, and maybe you want to get exception la uh, exceptions lazily from the reference, or maybe you uh, want to be able to check if the current uh, uh, iterator that refers to a particular state of the coroutine has an exception. So uh, you can uh, have lazy iterator that, uh, I, I called it lazy iterator that uh, has no accept increment operator and uh, uh, not no accept. So basically the reference operator can throw and also it has uh, has exception friend function with which you, you can uh, test if uh, this iterator currently refers to a state, to exceptional state. So uh, we have uh, re uh, reshuffled, so to speak, the responsibilities uh, here. So increment operator doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, throw an exception and hence no accept, it is no accept. And now operator, uh, the reference operator may throw an exception and we added the test function. Um, and we have to replace um, iterator with a lazy, lazy iterator in uh, our generator uh, type. And notice that begin uh, is now also no accept. So begin uh, is now not, uh, that does not throw exceptions. Uh, I will not uh, show you um, the implementation of lazy iterator. It's uh, in the uh, bonus slides. If you want to see, uh, uh, I just want to show you the alternative design and uh, the consequences of uh, this uh, design uh, decision. And here we can have uh, basically the same loop with a uh, with, uh, begin um, uh, comparing to end and increment, which do not throw. We can check uh, the current iterator if uh, it refers to an exceptional state. We can, for example, break and never uh, bother with uh, handling that exception that we got. Otherwise, um, we can just dereference uh, the iter uh, iterator. And uh, there is a chance that uh, in case of an exception, uh, it will throw an exception. So the consequence of that design is that um, once you have an exception, again, similar to the situation we already uh, have seen, uh, once you have an exception, uh, every time you dereference uh, that iterator that refers to an exceptional state, you um, so the, iter uh, the dereference throws an exception and you uh, have an exceptions, uh, exception on your hands. And um, ideally you want to handle it, but anyway, uh, the reference becomes kind of somewhat inconvenient in case you have an exception, but this is uh, the price that you may want to pay uh, for laziness. 
Anyway, um, the penultimate part of uh, this presentation is uh, yielding values from nested generators. Um, in this case, we have a generator uh, bar that yields values that it uh, gets from uh, get values functions and uh, yields it one by one. Uh, another generator yields some values, some fixed values. Uh, and after that yields uh, values, every value that it gets from bar generator. So we have at this point one uh, level of uh, nestedness, but we can go deeper. We can have the third generator that uh, constructs a uh, bus generator, an instance of bus generator. It um, somehow uh, yields a modified value, mod modified first value from best generator, and uh, it doesn't care about the rest of the values from uh, that generator and uh, yields uh, uh, the rest values unchanged. So at this point, uh, we have uh, up to three, uh, three levels uh, of resumption and suspension which is not uh, free, of course, which is somewhat expensive. And uh, we would like to deal with that. And um, here is the next uh, thing I want to talk to you about, which is recursive generator. Uh, the difference is uh, that recursive generator allows us to yield the whole uh, generator, so the whole um, generate the object instead of yielding uh, every value uh, one by one. And uh, in our uh, uh, deepest, or like the most uh, nested uh, level, we have uh, generator uh, cooks, which uh, yields first value mod modified and yields the rest values uh, uh, all at once yielding the whole object of the generator. So uh, I will not show you the uh, implementation of recursive generators because we have no time for that uh, like at all. But I will try to uh, illustrate how it works and hopefully you'll uh, have an idea how, how recursive generators work in principle. So in this case, we uh, create first and foremost uh, our cooks uh, generator uh, coroutine frame is created for uh, for it. Uh, here you can see that we have additional fields um, in the promise uh, that is uh, some overhead. Uh, we use that uh, those fields to track nestedness, and um, after that, after we uh, get our generator, we are trying to um, iterate over its values. We uh, go inside the generator. Uh, here we create another generator uh, bus. Uh, uh, coroutine, um, coroutine frame is created for that coroutine uh, generator. Uh, then we uh, extract one value from uh, generator bus uh, and yield a modified value from uh, our cooks generator, in, the, in which case we Yes, we uh, go to bus generator, inside bus generator, we yield one value, we uh, yield uh, modified uh, well, uh, first value from bus generator, and uh, then we return back to our outside code, and then we continue to iterate over the uh, generated values. In this case, we get back to Cook's uh, generator, and uh, try to uh, try to yield the whole uh, bus generator that is uh, the var variable g, and in this case, uh, in, at this point, when we yield the whole generator, we um, uh, we uh, so to speak uh, connect uh, these generators so they uh, kind of know each other. Uh, the bus generator knows that uh, the root of the whole chain is uh, Cook's generator. And uh, Cook's uh, generator is now, uh, now knows that uh, the continuation uh, that uh, it has to go to 
when uh, a value is asked uh, from the cooks generator is the bus generator. So basically we get straight to bus uh, coroutine, then we uh, try to continue uh, to iterate over values that we are trying to extract from cooks. But at this point, we know that we have to go to continuation. We go to continuation straight to bus generator. We uh, yield the next value and uh, the next uh, values that we uh, want to yield is the whole another generator. At this point, uh, another coroutine frame for uh, coroutine bar is created. And uh, since we are yielding the whole uh, generator object, we have to uh, rearrange uh, the connections. We uh, say that the root of this chain, so the bar knows what's, what is the root of the chain, uh, and we uh, reassign the continuation to be the bar generator. Uh, we are uh, again trying to uh, get the next value. We go, go uh, straight to uh, the continuation. In this case, bar generator, we yield uh, all the rest values from that generator. Um, then we get back to bus generator. Uh, at this point, uh, bar uh, uh, accomplished its purpose. Uh, we destroy it by uh, so uh, first we reassign uh, the continuation back to BAS. We destroy the bar, uh, generate a uh, free of the resources, destroy the coroutine frame. Uh, then we return from BAS generator. Uh, at this point, we again, um, uh, the generator uh, BAS uh, variable G served its, its purpose. We have to destroy it, uh, release all the resources. We uh, reset the continuation. We uh, destroy the generator, destroy its coroutine frame. And at this point, we uh, finish the coroutine and we get back to outside code. And uh, the coroutine frame for cooks uh, lives again uh, as long as a variable h in this case lives. And so uh, this uh, this is how basically recursive generators uh, might work. Uh, and I hope uh, you have an idea, have a good idea of how to reason about that. So uh, in this presentation, generator and recursive generator uh, are different types because a recursive generator has some overhead because you know uh, you don't have to, have to pay for uh, uh, overhead when you don't want to. And uh, the good news is uh, that uh, the C++ uh, 23 standard will have likely a standard generator type, uh, which is a recursive generator. Um, we, uh, it uh, behaves uh, just like recursive generator in this talk. Uh, uh, so uh, let's uh, get a look at that. Uh, again, this is uh, straight from the proposal, uh, proposal number uh, P2502. Uh, probably the generator type should be no discard. Uh, I think this is an omission. But um, the thing that uh, bothers me uh, more that the omission of no discard is that uh, begin uh, member is uh, defined as uh, something that is as non-const, something uh, that um, changes the observable state, but uh, at the same time, uh, we have no uh, way to observe the state that is changed. And uh, moreover, that um, the proposal and the start, uh, standard says that um, begin can be called only once on one instance, and uh, calling begin again uh, is undefined behavior. So basically when we uh, want to call begin, uh, for example, to um, yield the first value uh, as something else, uh, some changed value, we call begin in this case. And uh, this can be written uh, in ranges style and uh, which also uh, calls begin once. 
And when we uh, want to iterate over um, all the values, uh, all the rest values, we uh, would like to do it using range four and uh, range four call begins. And this is basically undefined behavior at this point. Um, you can yield the generator using this uh, disambiguation uh, type element solve. So you basically uh, are trying to yield uh, the whole rest uh, um, values that uh, are left in the generator, but the standard doesn't say, is this UB after you called begin once? And um, also after you called begin once, uh, uh, passing the generator object somewhere else is pointless because you can't call begin again. Uh, and uh, this is the only way to uh, observe uh, the state and uh, calling begin again is UB and this is pointless. That's uh, what I want to say. This is probably modeled after input stream iterator in which case uh, the uh, behavior is defined and uh, you can restart basically the iteration over uh, values in this uh, in a stream but uh, for some reason um, this is not the case with with the std generator so we got a generator yay uh, a standard generator is recursive and has a reasonably small overhead uh, that's kind of whatever and uh, the biggest bummer is that uh, we can't restart or continue iteration after the first, uh, after begin is called uh, uh, once. So at this point, I'm already two minutes uh, over time. I will try to not uh, take uh, more than two minutes to at least touch async asynchronous generators and we'll uh, finish with this and uh, we'll get to Q&A after the, uh, this uh, presentation ends. So um, the synchronousness of the generator is uh, uh, due to uh, the fact that uh, we uh, may want to use asynchronous tasks within generators and uh, the result of asynchronous task is not ready immediately and we need to um, be able to suspend uh, this uh, generator coroutine. And um, after that, we uh, would like to uh, yield uh, the values uh, from uh, that uh, value collection that we got asynchronously. Uh, and uh, uh, this is how you might think you uh, may use it. Uh, in this case, uh, we use uh, for loop. Uh, explicitly defined with begin end and uh, some notion of next, some notion of incrementation. And uh, the uh, problem is that uh, incrementation is uh, asynchronous because uh, the next value uh, may not be uh, uh, ready at this point, and we uh, may uh, need to um, suspend the whole thing, the whole uh, coroutine, uh, the whole current coroutine, and uh, until uh, the value from the asynchronous uh, generator is ready. So uh, this is uh, not convenient. Uh, and uh, here is a somewhat better way to do it. And at least uh, this is the consensus that uh, I have seen in other, other code, other libraries. Uh, and um, you can get uh, a res uh, result synchronously from that uh, uh, coroutine like this and uh, it works roughly like uh, this. So we have a, a coroutine that uh, tries to extract uh, values asynchronous from asynchronous generator. We get to this point, we get uh, some notion of next, we call wait of, on next uh, object. Um, this coroutine, the current coroutine is suspended the control is transferred to the uh, asynchronous generator. Asynchronous generator may uh, suspend and whatnot. Uh, so um, eventually uh, it has a value ready. It yields a value. At that point, um, maybe asynchronously uh, that 
uh, after that value is uh, yielded, the control gets back here. Uh, we uh, get out of weight this coroutine, the initial coroutine that was suspended is resumed. Um, uh, from co-weight expression, we get uh, some kind of optional uh, and we can check uh, if uh, optional is not empty, then uh, we uh, still uh, got a value from the coroutine uh, from uh, a synchronous generator and um, um, we can use it. Otherwise, uh, empty optional means that uh, the generator has no values left and uh, we can uh, go and do something else. Uh, and uh, humbly recommend uh, uh, the other part, the other talk. If you are watching the recording, you can just Google it. And uh, thank you for listening. And uh, that's it. I think we have no questions so far. We'll uh, I'll, I'll get to um, Q and A area, and uh, we'll answer your questions there. Uh, by the way, thanks to Phil Nash for feedback. And I think uh, that's it. Bye.